So, uh, yeah, in the third session we are going to start. We are going to see some typical details. And this is a typical details in which we can realize the moment uh, resisting joint. All these joints are um, solved in a quite uh, simply method to, um, to summarize the bending. So we are speaking now that in this point here we want to create a rigid uh, joint that can transfer not only the shear but also the bending of course. And thanks to this kind of connectors, which are very small connector, are seven mils connector, able to um, to ins be inserted both in timber and in plates, timber and plates, with a very high ductility and also stiffness because you don't have any gaps between the timber and uh, steel. Basically, the, the scheme is that you take. Uh, axial forces acting in these directions and an axial forcing acting in these directions. So very basically it's like you have this lever from here to here from the central part of your group of connectors that is able to transfer and to keep together the joint. So this is basically how we can do and my project make this kind of calculation according to this approach. Actually, if I don't, uh, I'm not sure, but in my project you should have two ways to do it in the simplest way, which is this one that I showed you, or maybe in a more sophisticated way to take account all the different position of the, of the um, connectors respect of the center of eccentricity, also regarding the, the circular movement. But in timber, this is a well-noted and very appreciated way to create the, this kind of joint. Okay, yes? Perfect. We have this, the right slide here. Uh, the epoxy resin actually is realized on site, but it's very uh, critical installation. So uh, the concept is that must be realized from specialistic workers that know how to do, because at first you need to uh, prevent all the uh, spoiling, splitting of the resin from the structure, so you have to protect everything before installing. And much more is the fact that you need some time before putting the final load on the structure, because you, you need that the resin starts to work. And um, so for this reason it's a challenging approach that you, have, you can solve this element both with the resin and these connectors. Uh, what is good that from Rotoblast's point of view actually it would be the same because we have both the product but if we have to give a suggestion to our customer we always prefer this one because with the connectors uh, you are more easy to be used from everybody so also if you don't have like a very specialistic uh, workers on site it's easy to be, to be, to be solved. Ah, sorry. When would you go with epoxy resin fixing rather than metal plate? Well, well, actually, it's just a choice for the designer because basically it's the same. Let's say that with the resin, um, you have less problem related to the uh, net section of the timber because, of course, these are quite small, and this is not so often a problem, but if you make this kind of joint with bigger bolts that you can also do it, in that case it's very um, challenging to find the real section. So you have to remove timber and this what doesn't happen so much in the resin because in the resin you have much more surface that is working and you don't have this reduction of the cross section. So when you have 
probably you cannot have big dimension of the beam. In, the, in that case, if you are not able to do with the connectors, you find the other solution with the resin. Sorry, you mean with this? Is there a way to, eh, because it's so hidden, it's ah. difficult to, to inspect it, but is there a way to test it to see it or, instead of not load testing it? No, that's true. Uh, well, the tests are made uh, before installing. You can make some, some tests. Uh, let's say that this kind of resin, anyway, it, it's good because it's a total 100% epoxy resin. It means that uh, the tau, I mean the tau is the sliding force that you have, it's so high, so it's much more than 5 uh, uh, newton millimeter square, which in the timber instead, the tau of the timber is characteristic, something like 2.7. So this much more than 5, it's like a safety that for sure the, the sliding in the timber and the resin the, the minimum is the, the one of the timber, so the resin is much higher. So for sure it works. You just have to make sure that dimension of the surface that is acting. So for example, here you have a steel, and of course the resistance is given from the fact that between the steel, the timber, and between the steel and the timber, you have this resin acting with the sliding forces. So you just have to be sure that the surface on which is acting is enough. And then you just have to be sure that the installer made it in the proper way and wait the right time. And after that, it's a safe uh, product, right? Because it's CE market for timber construction and tested before to be used. Okay, yes? Yeah, okay, this is uh, uh, a challenging problem, mostly in timber. Um, well, let's say that in the, um, in the code you have three situations. The class of service one, when you are inside, and that's of course good for all kind of connector. The second class is when you, out, you are outside, but you are covered. So, and this second class is quite important because a lot of time, if you are in trouble, if you are outside, you can also um, cover your connectors with some timber. That means that you are outside, but you are in the second class too. And that's true, that's not only code. The timber is good because it's going to protect it. And so you are safer enough. And basically in this kind of uh, building, almost 100% of structural connectors are hidden from the timber. So we are okay. In the case you are in class of service three, so outside, and then the solution are the stainless steel screws, which are, we, it's possible to find the market, some stainless steel screws, or stainless steel anger brackets, the same. So, uh, of course, you have to go or by covering or with stainless uh, element. And also when uh, the timber takes up moisture, Well, you have to protect by waterproofing. The concept is that you have to avoid and to, to place the timber outside and to the moisture and humidity. Um, so it's, it's like a safe reason, the fact that you could use stainless steel, but the constant, and then we, we see now the session three that you have to make proper way with waterproofing tape uh, and membranes to cover everything um, to avoid the moisture inside the timber. Okay. Yes? Is it possible to create some kind of moment connection with this pull each other uh, screw, for example, joining the beam <coughs> and the post? And, uh, is, is, is it clear? Well, actually, yes. We tried sometimes. Um, let's say you, you have to, to imagine... Okay, let's, let's take this connection here. And uh, imagine that here you don't have any plates, of, sure, of course. You just have timber to timber. In this case, if you have, right this case, you, you place here uh, screws like here, 
full thread, 45 degrees. If you are able um, compare it with the width of the timber much than two or three couples in order to have a very big force because in this moment you're not interested only in the shear but you're placing here a lot of screws in order to create a very strong resistance in here and then of course you create the same here with a lot of screws here three couples um, not not long screws but like shorter screw in here in this way you are able to find to keep distances between the couple of screws here couple of screws here and you have this behavior that fix everything and this is common uh, for example when you want to create like in um, uh, like an arch principle a couple and throw pieces of wood like this in which all the joints are related through bending moment and we have made some realization some structures in the past regarding this method of course it's uh, you don't have so much resistance because with this one it's more you have more stiffness and so on but anyway you can solve anyway okay okay so uh, we can go further with the session three we have still about one hour so I think that oh, I think that I have to hurry a little bit but no problem okay so this part is more easy so we just have images and not such big numbers and formulas and so on so we can go faster here I wanted just to to show you some typical detailing of in particular CLT building uh, as you can see that this that our decision was to make both re rendering and um, picture with the rendering we are able to create like an ideal situation which could be good to to see what are the mistakes to avoid anyway the first part is the tie beam ground anchoring so when you have the flat floor usually it's a good way in order to level all the discrepancy of the concrete to place like a tie beam there uh, basically sometimes it's enlarged in order to be more resisted, resistance against the humidity and the moisture uh, this anchor beam can be um, can be anchored between um, with anchoring and so on and as you can see here it's basically your first step to realize your your building the very important detail it's this one so it's exactly where you want to insulate your panel which is a timber panels with the grain so uh, the, the timber is very uh, hung, hungry of uh, moisture and uh, so for this reason it's an important detail to be solved this case this is like a butylic element that can be uh, placed on site in order to create this this connection and and this instead is more used probably when you are going to in um, in the plant you can just place before going to the construction site of course the best solution would be to make this solution when you are in construction site plus this one when you are on site and um, it's important to focus on these details because it's one of the most critical point of timber uh, because in here everything can the bad things can ha happen exactly here in this moment of the construction um, again the second phase when the panels come you can see typical way to install it it's quite common to use um, prompt um, prompt to to install all the wood and and also this kind of uh, connecting with the with the hook this is typical hook use it to install the panels uh, I remember that maybe here in UK uh, it's not possible to use hook I'm not sure I, I spoke with somebody of you and our customers that 
um, sometimes you prefer also to use like um, um, like string in place of hook but anyway the, the hook is well noted way to uh, move all the panels and so on again we have to install the panels we have to install our angle brackets typical angle brackets are hold down like this one we place it according to design on the edge and in the opening uh, it's very important here to say that the anchoring of this kind of hold down in order to have very high forces for tension basically is always a chemical anchor because we are facing uh, tension which are quite high so uh, just a standard heavy plug anchor not always is enough um, so what it's, we, we underline when we show this uh, solution is that you have to give time to the worker to install at first the chemical anchor and then to fix everything so this is one typical problem that happens sometimes in the construction site when you have chemical anchor and you don't give time enough to the anchor to take it on the, on the surface because in the timber construction culture instead the forces are not so big in that, in that uh, places and so the standard anchors can be enough but in CLT um, constructions it's much better to use chemical anchors to install the hold down. Again, the Titan, this is an example of the angle bracket for shear resistance. So the classical configuration is this one for the uh, shear stressing along the panel. This is the solution when we are going in the planner way. We have then the problem to connect the wall. So the wall usually is connected by just screws, but you can see that it's quite common to use also these connectors above all in the territory where the seismic behavior is not so high. So for example, this is not used in South Europe, but is really well appreciated in Germany and Austria a lot. So this is just a U connector uh, that can be easily installed through like a hook, so just hang it on panel to panels and give the stability and above all you can imagine that create during the working uh, a perfect anchoring between this panel and this panel so you just have stability because you are able to create the 90 degrees panels and so also during the phase of installation you have right the stability of two panels together which is a good future for a connector like this again it's used not in seismic uh, zone because in seismic zone there you need um, full thread screws or 8 mil screws every 20, 30 centimeters, so which is a high resistance. And this instead, you just place uh, two of them um, and not more. So, And this, another typical instead uh, connection in the standard region, where you can see here the typical connection between wall to wall in this direction, wall to wall. Uh, you have, of course, in the plant, you have this design of the milling inside the panels you put another different kind of board usually large holes in this time not only for uh, not so much for uh, the um, the resistance to moisture but just to be sure that in that there you can recognize where you have the changing of the panels and then usually you place this butylic in order to just to give a first these two stripes of butylic, the first um, adhesive of the board and then of course the final resistance, the structural resistance is given from uh, standard screws. Usually these screws are 6 mil screws, 5 or 6 mil screws is enough. Instead, in here, again the connection wall to wall very important. This solution for example is with a flat head solution, large head that enhances you to close very well the panels all together. Uh, be careful here because in the cross laminated timber you must sure that you are not going parallel to the grain, to the layer, so or you know exactly uh, where you are going to install the screws and of course you can calculate if you are in the 40 centimeter, 30 centimeter parallel or not or better sometimes going just 
a little bit with inclination so you are sure you're not going parallel to the grain. Um, panel to panel wall connection can be realized also with angle brackets as well. Again, very important, the external ceiling for the temporary protection. Um, all this, this element, this uh, bootle element can be used in all the critical uh, detailing where you are not sure about what's going on in the construction site because it prevents all the, the moisture inside the timber. Air tightening inside, this is not only related to cross-laminated timber, but in person of the vapor infiltration. And again, the importance of sealing and taping in all detailing. Above all, when you have holes for the, <coughs> the plumbing and so on, the pipes um, on the industry, in this case, this is our, our taping, it's important for sealing all the, uh, the, the holes inside the building. All the details regarding wall to wall and above all on the external part again the taping of all the openings that can happen this is instead okay we are you see that we are increasing we are going up in our construction side now we have placed all our wall and we want to place our floor the typical standard connection is just you see with standard screws because of course it's just shear resistance that you have but you can also place full thread screws inclinated if you have very big um, values of forces just inclinated and again the shear like before is transferred by screws placed it with inclination oops <laughs> okay uh, again um, other kind of uh, connection of the floor. This is the modern use, uh, much more used nowadays. Here is when uh, the floor is installed with this double inclination. You can imagine that with this double inclination you have a very strong resistance both in these directions and in this direction. It's what uh, before was asked from uh, uh, from you, um, in, the, in this case, this is the perfect connection that you can realize, thanks to the full thread screws. Again, secondary to primary beam, typical installation, the concealed beam. Uh, this is like, a, let's say, T-hanger, uh, hidden joint, uh, in a very important fire resistance to, heat, to hide everything uh, beyond the, uh, inside the timber. A uh, well noted uh, um, anger beam that works, of course, with shear. This element, these connectors are self perforating dowels, the same that I showed you before when I was speaking about the bending joint to create. This kind of connector can go inside timber and the plate and timber again and to realize the final, the final uh, joint. Very important to fix wall to floor to wall with this perforated plates from outside that can give the final tie of the building regarding the tension forces from the ground to the up and you can see that here um, it's realized again in the opening and in the edge. You can see that you can also realize with double level of hold down important in this case that this hold down on the floor is then connected with this hold down. <coughs> in this case you have the perfect transmission of the forces because as we have seen before there is this forces going through a preferred line of load that have to go from up to down. Here we are connecting the floor, the timber floor, so this is mistake I wanted to show timber to wall and this other application when you have the beam so hang it hang it loads and so on we are arrived now on the roof so as I was telling before this is uh, typical or what should be done in a typical CLT construction so CLT panels on wall panels and again you have the screws 
but it's quite common also to start you can see here you have your CLT panels but then uh, okay now here maybe you have the standard roof with the beams and so on not only the panels and of course the screws are the same screws used for shear used also in that part this slide we have already seen I explained to you very important to create this rigid joint can be realized through the self perforating dowels or through the epoxy resin um, about the resin I already explained so I think that uh, it's enough just to say that it's very interesting probably the resin in this joint also more because in this joint where you have three or more um, beams acting and the same point here probably the resin can be a good solution otherwise you have to design properly different connectors that can close together all the beams on the roof again you can have a concealed beam hanger or uh, fully threaded screws this typical the reinforcement that I told you before when I was speaking about the big beams that you have to reinforce for problem orthogonal to the grain the same problem can happen here when you have the local stresses acting for compression for example in this case you can imagine a big beam that is standing on a column if the column uh, is not enough uh, it's not you don't have the verification of the column for the compression or talking to the fiber to the grain you can place here the screws to reinforce it or when happens that you can imagine a high beam with a rafter which is connected in the lower side of the beam also in this case is a typical case when you have here problem in the grain and so you have to place these screws to reinforce it and uh, these are well noted problem that you find in Eurocode and so on in order to prevent the brittle failure in the timber and very important we spoke in the first session is the wind bracing of the floor so the floor um, and the cross cemented timber cannot be enough to give the stiffness to the uh, house if it's, you have good forces so of course with this principle of the trusses you are able to transfer big loads uh, of tension inside in here and you can realize through the perforated plate so this is basically what happens in all the floor of the cross cemented timber for high forces horizontal you can create in this way the box behavior of your house and the good behavior of your yours at seismic point and also you can use for making some cantilever so you can imagine here a cantilever joint in which the beam tries to go down and you need here something inside like a couple of screws for the shear but for the resistance you can create a bending moment also was a question before about uh, that one also with this perforated plates above that take the traction and I was speaking, I uh, told you something about this kind of screws. Here is a typical detailing in order to have the perfect continuity of all the insulation on the houses uh, regarding the possibility of passive houses. And with these screws, with a double thread, you can imagine that in here the roof tries to go down and the screws it's withdraw it. And in this way, you have a perfect uh, fixing of this part of the roof on the uh, below surface and you don't have any interruption of the insulation this is the most important things to do in timber construction and you can make the same uh, work on the facade and so on some detailing about the outdoor that somebody asked me also before just, just terraces and uh, facades there are some connectors, the specific connectors that are able to be hidden inside the boards and well appreciated from architecture and from a carpenter and from private, uh, private workers that want, don't want to see screws outside from, for the final detailing of the houses. 
or you can still use screws in order to, to fix your final um, covering. Uh, yeah, in timber construction, it's, it's, it's quite nice to, to have a good, uh, a good covering outside. So it's important not to, to, to avoid to make care also in this kind of uh, joint and detailing because uh, it's a good way to make uh, a good aesthetic reason in the house. But you must be really careful because timber is a natural material. So if you don't create enough spaces between the elements and if the water is not passing through, uh, the damage is a risk in timber structure. So this kind of joint and this kind of uh, uh, screws with stainless material that are not going to corrode are the good solution for avoiding the problem of uh, durability outside. And again, different kind of screws for different situation regarding the colors of the wood or the, if you are close to the swimming pool and, and so salt uh, situation. These are some detailing also what you can do to prevent the moisture. This is just a post base that it's good because the water cannot uh, go inside from below and our situation that can be solved with, with a good uh, product. And this is another example of a uh, connector that can create the moment bending that you asked me before. Uh, it's the first example of a uh, connector and it works exactly in the same principle I told before. So, okay, the cross configuration, X configuration, from the steel point of view with welding here can create this uh, moment bending resistance. Furthermore, you have to create like a scheme of dowels in which the forces are taken in here and here and you create this bending moment acting with the lever arm that create the moment resisting and you can do it at the base in order to prevent uh, the rotation of the elements. And then the outside, the construction goes on with typical element for, uh, we call it a clip clap joint or hook joint that you can install and then you can remove and so on. It's good joint because they works not only in shear, but a lot of axial resistance and also in this direction. So there are a three dimension resistive joint, uh, well known and well used. Um, furthermore, they have this uh, future to be also uninstalled uh, when you have finished it to use your construction, probably when you have a restaurant in the winter or in the summer, you can remove and, and so on. And this is an interesting connector that I showed with you before that can solve particular situation, concrete to timber uh, situation. You can see that the principle always, always the same placing the connectors with inclination, which is like a, a revolutionary approach. Uh, because let's say, again, if, if you have shear to shear, uh, screws of eight mils, it's like one kilonewton, 100 kilos. I'm speaking not in characteristic uh, values, but like a standard value, so like acting values, so 100 kilos like this. But if the same screws you place inside the timber, you try to remove, because of the thread, is something like 300 kilonewtons, so three times. So this is why the thread works better than the shear in the general application that I showed you a lot of time, the screws inclined. So three times of resistance more, thanks to the fact that the local thread is working inside the grain. And finally, we ended our uh, building, our house. We are inside the, the construction, the internal wall can be resolved with this uh, with this detailing. Just a few information about acoustic. I don't go inside about decibel, you know it's a logarithmic uh, scale, so uh, basically these are the level in which we are. As I told you, in the timber is one of the most critical aspects, acoustic, why? Because it's actually a material without a big mass, so you don't have this massive approach of, of the structure. And so you must solve in some other way. And above all, in the timber, the critical aspect is that the vibration the, of the timber is exactly in the same level of our acoustic here. I mean, in the steel, in the concrete, the vibration when we are going to, to move and to work on it, it's on higher level. 
and we, we, don't, uh, we, we don't hear so much uh, noise about the concreteness. The, the timber, uh, we were unlucky, but it's the same range of our, uh, our level of appro uh, approaching the, the acoustic problem. So, uh, of course, all the detailing and concerning about these disconnections between the different panels that we have. And this is how we have to, to think and to, uh, to look forward the acoustic detailing. Basically, the most important aspect to avoid is and to prevent is the impact sound when you have like walking on here or the standard noise that comes from one uh, detailing to another. These are the most known way to create this connect. So you have wall to floor uh, connection in which you put these stripes that can prevent the transmission of the vibration. This is another use typical. Everything is, con is related to create this connection. These are all the profiles. It's important to realize not only in the structure of the houses, but also in the internal partition of the structure. So you are sure that both from the structure to the inner part is disconnected on that part. And all these material are detailing that show you how to, um, to resolve this problem. This is interesting because you can see that we have three uh, detailing now. This one is the most basic detail that you can create just with this element here, this profile. In this one, it's much, it's another step because you create this asymmetry, let's say, between the timber and the insulation. And this is the best solution, of course, because uh, the sound and uh, your wave, the sound wave are coming here and you have more level in which can be stopped all the time. Uh, the acoustic problem in timber structure, for sure, in the future, will have a big development because nowadays, it's really um, a field in which there are a lot of things to do. Uh, we started quite recently and we developed a, a lot of products, uh, but we have seen according to our customers that uh, once the building is realized, it's one of the most uh, uh, argument uh, between the, the worker that realized the home and the private, uh, the private people because uh, it's very important to realize all the tailing in the proper way. For example, here we have seen that the tailing are according to disconnect all element, but like in this part, in, you asked me before about the concrete. Uh, this is exactly the solution that I wanted to show. This is and this kind of uh, mattress with uh, a particular rubber. It's um, one centimeter high. And of course, you have this soft uh, material that are able to, to prevent all the vibration between uh, the, um, the working of, of people. This one, and also a better way, again, is to create a double level, double layer of insulation. For example, here you have the first, um, the first mattress here, and then you have this, uh, it's, it's like a sand, it's a kind of sand in order to create this level. And finally, you have this again in order to arrive and disconnect perfectly the floor from the wall. So with this double detailing, it's not so common to see this kind of detailing, but this is what theoretically you can resolve without the concrete. And if a worker and if a company makes it, you can be sure that your problems are avoided. But it's important, nowadays there is not yet this culture of creating this insula acoustic insulation. Our hope is that in the future it's increasing this culture of mm, making the tails in the proper way. And I was saying that say, acoustic is very difficult because not only this kind of, con of detailing you should make, but also this kind, I mean, all the detailing regarding the air tightening of the building, because of course the acoustic passing through not only the vibration, but only also throw the air. So you have to prevent any holes that you can have in your building. And these are typical detailing for arc tightening. That means also acoustic insulation. Also in the windows, 
about the, the formals is very important. Uh, the recommendation is to use foam with uh, closed cells because uh, sometimes standard foam can be, when you go to cut it to resolve these details, then the air coming through, through the cells. Instead now in the industry are available foam with the closed cells that uh, avoid this passing through the, the, the foam of the air. Also on the, on the roof, this is a typical situation where you have, are you on the roof and the, the rain is coming and you need this kind of mattress to avoid uh, the splitting of the, of the raining on it. And then the plumbing uh, and all the technical detailing concerning like this. Okay, uh, I think that for the session three is enough. <laughs> Here, uh, this is just a real example where you see that they put the insulation on the panel, this is the anchor, it was a standard way to, to show you just an example of what happens in the construction site. Uh, the installation of the screws, uh, the prompt, and so on. I think that we, I, I spoke already a lot, so <laughs> you have seen uh, typical details here. Okay, the last part. So, okay, for, have you have questions about this? Yes. Well, this is also a very good question because unfortunately there is not such a big quality control during the working. We would like that a lot of uh, director of the works could control much more what's going on in the construction side. Uh, so basically it's just the control must be the right screws, I mean the right length in the right place and that's the only way only stuff that you can do uh, but now we are seeing that the situation is getting better uh, because we were the first to introduce the CE marking for the screws in 2009 and nowadays we also we were the first to introduce the ETA for the screws and we all, always uh, want and struggle with uh, our customers and with the director of our customer to focus attention on what's going on. Also because we are, we are responsible as producer of connectors of what everything is going on in the construction side. And sometimes we receive some complaints about the behavior of some screws. So we have to go there to check and 99% of the time is for a bad installation of the element. And so of course, if we would able to avoid this discrepancy between our recommendation and the real way, we would not receive any more complaining from customers. So <laughs> anyway, it's... I'm it, just wondering, because it's, um, you've, you've sort of highlighted a number of times how having an incline makes a big difference. Okay, well, yeah, well, there also... Yeah, the, yeah. That that's very important, at least that the concept of the inclination now, all the workers they have nowadays. The uh, workers working for a timber company, they know the concept of inclination. Of course, you, are not, you cannot be sure if it's 45 degrees or 40 or 50 or 55. But let's say that also during the design, you're not going to design exactly with safety factory zero. So um, we have seen according to our, our experience that this not represent a big problem. You have template and so on in order to work better with the 45 degrees. Uh, but this kind of solution is also better with the thread because you are sure that the screws is working for all the length of the screws, like the concept that w one bolt is no bolt. It's the thread is uh, not, not so related to this concept because in the thread, at least it's a thread. So if three centimeter of thread is not working, at least there are other four centimeter and so on. Okay, other questions? No, okay. I would like to ask you one question. Yes. Um, I was just wondering, if you design the PLC building, um, you have so many manufacturers um, which uh, provide PLC, like yeah. MLH, uh, for example, MLH can provide the full detailed design of the structure. And 
And um, so what would be, um, why, why people would have to come to engineering to do the design if, um, as you said, timber is still kind of fresh material and uh, we don't fully understand it, um, like the connection with the different coals, etc. and it would take longer time for somebody like us to design it and specialists who are cons constantly dealing with the stuff and they have their own um, subcontractors in Sweden work, etc. So what would be the advantage for us as a practitioner to convince yeah. Well, yeah, it, it, it's true. This this fact is quite true. I mean that, of course, when you fin finalize finalize your work, uh, the producer of CLT uh, has a uh, good care in designing and placing the Excel details that you, they happen. But according to our experience, um, a lot of private um, private family and private people are now uh, awarded about the importance and the potential to the performance of CLT building. And the first passage sometimes it throw uh, private engineers, which is could be one um, one track to you can you can do. So you are like the first reference that you are inside the timber, you know how to design, you can make like a pre-dimensional and then you can uh, suggest and then you can go for the final producer, and then you can install like a um, relationship with the, the, the final producer. Or also s sometimes happens in the opposite. So, so maybe the, the, the producer uh, needs anyway the modeling from an external designer. Uh, so maybe you could be um, the people that is more focused on the general behavior of the forces inside the timber and then the, the final uh, check is given from the construction side of the producer. So the tracks are two, uh, but we have seen that in the private world in, of engineers, it's increasing so much the CLT construction that I think it's a good opportunity to... In, what, in which areas? In, in, in Europe? More like well, I'm speaking about, uh, yes, about, about all the Europe, yes. So could be a good... Yeah, well, actually, okay, my experience in UK is not so, so big, let's say, but I've been here since three years ago to see what, what's going on in the market. And it's true, here probably there are uh, few, not producer, but few big company that design. And um, maybe because it's a new, it's, it's right, because it's, it's newer here in UK than in Europe, this concept of CLT. So I think that in the future can develop like it's going on in Europe, so that in Europe also they are starting, maybe also in here they are starting to produce and to realize houses and so on. So could, I could say that uh, also in Europe and South Europe at first, were company that were designing and producing everything and then they came the engineers that take the problem and face it from another point of view and they create this relationship so probably according to my experience also Alberto you want to say something but it, it, this here probably nowadays is more related to big construction and few but there are so such few um, company that re related with this that it's a good opportunity to develop also in, in the other so maybe it's a good opportunity for you right because nowadays it's not so common of course in, in UK it comes from the culture of the steel and so on and then it comes the CLT so I think could be better here than in Europe where it's already well noted maybe <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's the disadvantage of, of that not discovered mm -hmm. by us where the time is money and I guess as you said
said there's only a few companies I work for the company which have a, a separate department which only deal with Simba uh -huh. uh, CLT. So they have research, they have everything, every tool possible to kind of do it. So that's the advantage for the company because everybody will go to them or KLH or whatever, whichever uh, manufacturer. But for the small consultancies, I don't kind of see that this is very lucrative until it's more understood or I, I don't know in here whether yeah. it's the... Well, uh, I have also seen that actually an engineer, <laughs> if, if you are also an engineer, private engineer, um, you can also work with local company that are not used to the timber because you have the experience to know how to build. And so uh, it's also what's happening in Europe. So you are an engineer that can design the small company that is not working with CLT usually can buy the panels from other big companies and they have anyway the works to do and you have to work to design. So in that case, you are making the work of the designer that design everything and, and the final product is, is just bought from, it, from your your worker, your, your company, your, your timber industry. So it's also a good opportunity, I think, because if you arrive to a high level, um, you can create n not your own company, but you are really the, uh, the engineer, especially that can check everything because you arrive to who's going to build it and the who's built it can arrive to the producer. But the final producer, doesn't need to, to go inside the project because there are you. There is you that you make this kind of stuff. So also this could be an approach. And regarding the architectural, actually uh, with cross oriented timber, uh, we have seen that the modern architecture is, is easier to do it. I mean the, more the, the modern, not maybe just with glass and this kind of architecture, but I mean the, the modern with a flat roof uh, and uh, modern composition, the CLT is, is a good material to, to create this kind of stuff. Uh, you can see in the literature, in the, in the magazines, you can see a very nice examples of high level architecture with the CLT and probably much more than with the other material, right? Because you can also have the natural behavior and you have more feature to spend from a commercial point of view with the timber.